Hello and welcome to Evaluate This. I'm Andrew Fryer and in this short screencast I'm going to show you how to build VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, using Windows Server 2012. I've got three laptops in play here, London 1, 2 and 3 at the top of this list. I've got a virtualized domain controller, London DC, and I've got five brand new virtual machines created at 1554, which have just come out of SysPrep with no features or anything installed on them. In order to create a VDI environment using all these machines, I just simply go to Manage up here and Add Roles and Features. I'm presented with two options once I start to add roles and features in Server 2012, and it's the bottom option this time that I'm interested in, Remote Desktop Services Installation. I click Next, and I'm going to go for a standard deployment. A quick start would just put everything onto one machine and might work for a POC or a small business. I'm creating VDI, so I want the top option here. If I was creating terminal services, remote desktop services, I'd be using the bottom option. You can combine the two, as we'll see later. I'm now told about all the roles that I'm going to be setting up. And so what I have to do is identify which machine to use for which role. So my broker is RDSB. That can be a virtual machine. My web access server is also a virtual machine. But my virtualization hosts have to be physical machines running Hyper-V. And I'm going to use all three of my laptops here. London 1, 2, and 3. I'm then informed I might need to reboot my physical hosts. If they hadn't got the Hyper-V role already on there, then that would happen. They have, so I don't need to worry about checking this box and clicking Deploy. That's going to take a couple of minutes. If I go down to Remote Desktop Services now in Server Manager, you can see this diagram view of what I've just configured. It's a little confusing because the green things actually mean you need to add some stuff in. So I've got no gateway. I've got no licensing. But bizarrely, I haven't got a session host either, and those are connected by dotted lines into my diagram. If I hover over Web Access, you can see that I can right click and I can add more servers in if I wish to. I can also configure high availability for my broker, my middleware that's inside my VDI environment. But what I'm going to do first is to create some virtual desktops on the hosts that I've just provisioned. And in order to do that, I create a virtual desktop collection. And this simple wizard allows me to do that. I'm going to create a pool of virtual desktops. And I'm going to call it pool. And select this top option, because that's a bit like having a carpool. You just go down to the carpool, take the next car out of the garage and go and use it hand the keys back when you get back and you might get a different car next time you go out as opposed to having your own car and using that all the time. And the first and most critical part of this process is to identify a blueprint that you're going to use for these virtual desktops. That needs to be a virtual machine with a sysprep copy of your client operating system on it and it needs to be turned off. And I've actually got this one here, do not boot Windows 8 VDI template. And this is like deploying any operating system. I could put in a sysprep answer file or just put in the installation settings in the wizard, which is what I'm going to do. So I can set my time zone. I'm going to decide where my virtual desktop is going to end up. And rather than provide access to everybody for those, I'm going to remove that and put in my own user group that I've already created, Camp VDI users. I'm then asked about how many desktops I need to provision. I'm going to select 10 here. And unfortunately, my pool prefix has been abbreviated to poo. So I'm just going to put the L back in there. And the suffix here just means it's going to start with pool 0, pool 1, pool 2, pool 3, and so on as the virtual desktops get created. I can then spread those across my various laptops. And I'm actually going to slightly change this around and put 4 here. And I'm doing that so that you can see that it's a pretty primitive wizard. It just puts a red box around if you can't do your sums properly. I click Next here, and now I get to choose where to put all of these virtual machines, where to put the data, and I'm going to put it all on a network share. In an earlier part of Evaluate This, I created a highly available file share called HA File Server, and I can use that again here. And the other secret source that's inside VDI in Windows Server 2012 is the way that we can split off users' data from the base operating system and put it into a separate differencing disk. And there needs to be a location for that, and I'm going to use not VM store, but user store. That's pretty much all I have to do. This wizard is now going to go off and provision those 10 virtual desktops for me. 
Now that took a little longer than it needed to because on each of my machines I realized I hadn't set a key feature which is to build those desktops in parallel rather than in serial. If you want to do that, here's the PowerShell. Basically hacking a registry setting to change the concurrency value in this case to five. Anyway, let's see what we've got. If I go into Virtual Machine Manager, you can see my three physical laptops here. Here's the four machines, pool seven, eight, and nine, six, seven, eight, and nine running on this machine. We've got four, three, and five on London two, and on London one, we have zero, one, and two. So now we've created our virtual desktops. They're ready for use by our users. All our users have to do is go to a website, which you can see here. I'm going to get a certificate warning because I haven't set certificates up properly, but I'm going to ignore it. And then all I have to do is sign in as a user. And you can see I've got my pool. I click on that. I get some options here. This will be slightly different depending on what client you're using. And here's my desktop. If I go over to my highly available file share where all these VMs are being stored and look at what's going on in here, you'll see if I go into my user store that my user state has been saved in my own differencing disk and every time I log in, I'll get that and there's a blank template there. And then the pooled virtual machines are in my VM store and here they all are with their disks and so on and so forth. And notice here's a snapshot of that and it reverts back to the base machine every time it's being used. And finally, if I go back to server manager now, I can also see my pool here by highlighting the pool over here. And there's all my machines. And you can see that I've actually now signed into pool number five. I could go on now and add in remote desktop session hosts as well. And I'll do that in a separate video. And if you want to try that yourself, all you'll need is Windows Server 2012, which you can download in the link below.